Okay, so if you haven't already, check the description uh, below the video. There will be a link where you can download a free PDF book that you can either print out or have on a screen next to you. Uh, we'll be working through that book in this series of videos. Um, once you've got that, we'll open it right up to the first page. There will be... Um, There'll be like a title page and then um, like a chart that shows sort of the layout for the progress of the videos, That's or the lessons rather. And that's not super applicable to these videos because you can just kind of go at your own pace. But if you if you want to see it, that's uh, in the pipe band that I play with. That's sort of the schedule that we try to stick with for our students as they come through. These are in, in semester chunks, so someone will come in for one semester, work through that first section. The next semester, if they're ready for it, they'll go on to the second and then the third. Um, then we've got a chart that shows your hands. So that's where we're going to start today. So here's how you hold your practice chanter. And also, if you don't have a practice chanter, again, in the description for this video, you'll find links to, oh, uh, I'll put up a video, maybe a blog post, something, some sort of guide to getting a practice chanter so that you don't end up buying something that's bad and get a good practice chanter. Um, there are plenty of good reasons to, to get a good practice chanter. You don't want to have one that's going to be limiting your, your capabilities. This is challenging enough without having a, a, an instrument you have to fight with. So this is our practice chanter. There's one hole on the back and then there are seven holes across the front. You might have a couple of, depending on the style of practice chanter, you might have a couple of holes that are kind of on the sides down at the bottom. You don't do anything with those. That's just, uh, it's for, I'm not sure exactly if that affects timbre or what, but that's, uh, Air, air just gets released down here. So these seven on the front and the one on the back are the only ones that you have to worry about putting your fingers on and taking your fingers off of. So we're going to focus on those. Um, so if you're left-handed, some people who are left-handed learn to play bagpipes uh, right-handed. Uh, as you're probably aware, if you are left-handed, there are a lot of things that sometimes it's just easier to break your brain and just go through it right-handed. But uh, plenty of great pipers who are left-handed, so they play the opposite of everything I'll be describing. I'll be describing it for a right-hander. I'll try to use terms like top hand and bottom hand so that it doesn't get too confusing for left-handers. But um, for now, if you're gonna be playing left-handed, use your right hand for the top, left hand for the bottom, and for the rest of us, left hand on the top, right hand on the bottom. So your left thumb goes over that hole on the back. And that takes care of that whole side of the chanter. Then comes your pointer finger for the top hole, middle finger for the second, and your ring finger for the third. Pinky doesn't do anything, it just sits here looking fancy. Then your right hand, or your bottom hand, starts with your pointer, then your middle finger, then your ring finger, then your pinky. And that's got all the holes covered. One thing to keep in mind is that, no notice that my, my fingers are relatively straight. If I squeeze the chanter really hard, and then let's see, you let's see if you can see on the on the camera. Can you see little marks? Maybe you can't. If I, if I squeeze it really really hard, then what what I would like to be able to show you, I guess it's easier to show in person. Oh, there's one you can see with the lighting. See that right there? That's the imprint of the hole on my finger. So on my middle finger, that's about where it sits, and on my pointer finger, it sits more like right about here. What I'm trying to point out is simply that we don't curl our fingers to play with our fingertips on the bagpipes. Um, later on, you want to be able to have a lot of really fast mobility and trying to get a fingertip to land right on a hole and cover the hole completely, it's really difficult. I'm sure it could be done, but it's kind of unnecessarily difficult. If we put our fingers straight, then we've got a lot more finger space to cover up that hole. And the holes on your practice chanter are a lot smaller than the holes on your bagpipe chanter. So this, is, this is, becomes all the more important when you transition to bagpipes. So you want your fingers to be pretty darn straight. So just notice the way that the, the chanter cuts through my fingers. It's right on the middle of that center pad on each of these fingers. The pinky gets a little closer to the end just because of the natural curve. Depending on the length of your fingers and stuff, it'll be a little bit different for each person. But that's the general idea, straight fingers. Now you don't need to be holding them rigidly straight though that might be a good way to get started so you get accustomed to holding your fingers like that and not curling them up. So that's something you'll probably need to remind yourself of over and over again over the first few weeks. Don't curl your fingers. Nice and straight. 
And the next thing before we start blowing it to make noise is for this video, I'm standing up, so I am holding my chanter up. But in general, if you can practice in front of a desk or a table and rest the bottom of your chanter on that surface, that's ideal. Or if you can cross a leg and rest it on your knee. Um, think about uh, like a piano player, for example. If a person's playing the piano, um, the piano exists in space. It's sitting there in space. And then their fingers come out to play on the piano, right? So they have complete fluidity of movement. Um, they can be nice and light and quick. Um, because they don't have to worry about holding the piano up. Imagine if a person had to hold the piano up with their thumbs while they played with their fingers and how much that would limit how smoothly and how fluidly they could play. It's not the same for every single instrument. You know, a flautist has to hold their flute up, but in general you can think about like someone playing violin. They, well, there are different styles of violin playing. I guess that's fair, but in general a person playing violin will tuck the violin under their chin and their hands can be completely free and the violin will stay right there in space. Then they reach up to the neck and lift up that bow, and they play on the violin, they don't have to be holding it up in, in, in the air while they're playing. Same for a cello that's stationary on the ground. Guitar players either have a strap, or if they're sitting down, they get it set in their legs, so then they can reach up and play, especially classical guitar. So this is true for a lot of instruments, and this is what is true for bagpipes as well. You can imagine if I had my bagpipes here, I'd have my bag under my arm, and then the chanter of the bagpipes is just kind of floating out here in space because the bag under my arm comes out and is holding it up for me. And so then I just reach up and I play on the chanter, but I'm not holding it tight, right? I'm not having to hold it up in space. So try to keep that in mind. Keep your fingers nice and fluid, especially while you're starting to learn. It's gonna be a very natural tendency to squeeze the chanter. When I was first learning, what, the, what they told me and always stuck with me was, imagine your chanter is a varnished turd and you do not want to break through that thin layer of varnish. Maybe a, a, a safer analogy would have been like a, a raw egg or something like that, but whatever floats your boat. Um, just try to be as loose and fluid and, and comfortable as you possibly can. So now we're going to start um, making a little bit of noise. So I want you to look at your chanter, get your thumb, pointer, middle finger, ring finger on the top hand in place, okay? Then get your pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger, and leave your pinky up off of the chanter. And blow in your chanter. You should get a nice low, low sound like this. If you're, now our chanters won't be perfectly in tune, but they should be close to each other. If you're hearing something like this, or something like this, it's probably because one of these fingers up here is not quite covering the hole that it's supposed to be covering. When I'm teaching little kids, sometimes I actually put tape over the top sets of holes so that they can just focus on these bottom two to start. So if you're having a hard time getting those holes covered and you just wanna make some progress, that's not a terrible thing to do. Just make sure you're still putting the right finger in approximately the right position. But uh, most folks just kind of work through it. Um, basically, uh, as the air comes down your chanter, it's going to escape through the first hole that it can find. And the higher up that hole is, the higher up the sound is going to be. So what we're doing by covering each hole with our fingers is trying to force that air. It gets corralled, so it has to keep going down, 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 until it meets this hole right here, and finally can come out from that hole. So if you're getting some weird noises, kind of stuff, try blowing in your chanter while you put your fingers on each hole one at a time. And you should hear the sound change every time. So if we were uncovering everything, don't worry about it if you have to work at it a little bit more than that. You might have something more like this. It's worth it if this is a little bit of a challenge to just pause the video and work on that a few times. You can feel the holes usually. Um, a lot of chanters, I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well, will have what's called a, a countersink on the holes. Um, I've had some students with uh, sort of cheaper chanters that didn't have a countersink. That just means that the actual rim of the hole is, is right where it should be, but then there's kind of a secondary hole at the top that makes a, a bit more of a ridge so you can feel it a little better with your fingers. 
So I've had some students with cheaper chanters that didn't have a countersunk hole, and we just took a Dremel and kind of hollowed out the top bit of that hole. It's up to you if you want to mutilate your chanter like that. But you can feel the holes a little bit sliding around, but if you have to, you know, turn your chanter and look and make sure your finger's covering each hole, that's fine. This is part of what's going to drive that tendency, though, to squeeze the chanter. Because once you get that hole, you don't want your finger to move and uncover it. So if that happens a little bit, don't feel bad about it. I'm just going to, I'll probably remind you about a million times, relax your hands. Because it's something that even I, after playing for over 15 years, uh, especially when I'm learning a new song or something, I have to remind myself, wait, I'm starting to tense up, starting to squeeze, I need to relax my hands. So let's run through that one more time together. Uh, we're going to go from the top down to this 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 note right here with our pinky up so high noise that's our thumb okay so once you've got that noise all i want you to do is go When you first start, depending on the spacing for your chanter, you might get something like this. Where you have to kind of search around for the hole with your pinky, and that's okay. Keep doing that over and over and over again, and eventually you'll get to where you can go. Because that muscle memory will start to kick in, and your finger will know right where it's headed. And we're going to work on building that for, for really each finger, so that you can just kind of snap on and off and go right to it. But here at first you have to search around a bit, that's okay. So that's what you're gonna work on. Work on going from the top and getting a clear sound change all the way down until you get to here. And then do, 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 do.